Hey, you're watching Chasing Green. My name's Jake, and today we're going to be doing a review on the on the Beretta A300 Outlander. Now, I've had this gun for two years. I've kind of waited to do a review on it just because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to say after the first year. It just I didn't have an overwhelming opinion on it either way. And still, after two years, after two seasons of hunting with it, putting it through the ringer, I mean, we duck hunt every day, squirrel hunt, turkey hunt, all these things. If I was gonna sum up the A300 Outlander in one sense, it'd be like, it'll get the job done, but it's gonna leave you wanting more. And that's the bottom line of it. So I'm gonna quickly break down the pros and cons of the A300 Outlander. Here's the pros. Look out now. As you can see, it will get the job done. But to be honest, I'm gonna attribute most of that to that baby right there. That's a pattern master. That's a game changer, by the way, whatever gun you put it in. At least it has been for me. My buddies all have Stoger M3500s, they got 870s, they got Mossbergs, and it hangs with all those. I mean, as far as the budget guns and not getting hung up and just being day-to-day -day usable, um, it's going to be on par with those guns. Another pro is if you're a Beretta guy, you get that Beretta feel with the A300 Outlander, which is the main reason why I bought it. When I put it in my hands, it feels like a Beretta, and if if you're a Beretta guy, you know what I'm talking about. I'm a Beretta fanatic. I've shot Beretta basically my entire life. I had the model 1201F. This is a way older gun. Most of you probably never even seen it. Her uh, her career came to an end about two years ago. Drawn down on a green head, shot into the barrel blew up. Luckily I wasn't hurt. Which brings us to the A300 Outlander. When you put it in your hands, it's gonna feel like a Beretta. I've also shot dove loads, turkey loads, duck loads through it. It cycles them all pretty well. Let's talk about the cons. Like I said, this gun's gonna leave you want more. It was, it's the worst built, it's the worst quality built Beretta I've ever seen. You can just tell the barrel on it, the chamber, inside the chamber, the trigger even, just everything about it is low quality. It's, I'm really surprised Beretta even put it out, even at that price point of under $700. It is a budget gun and you can't expect to get a A400, you know, a $1,500 gun. But this gun, I'd break it down after a day out in the field in the rain and just the trigger mechanism inside, everything in it would just have spots of rust. The barrels already started to rust. Now I'm not privy to all the coatings they put on barrels nowadays and all that, but I'm sure you can get it dipped and it'd be, you know, a lot more protected. And I'm sure the camo ones are more protected as well than just the straight, than just the straight stock barrel that comes on it. I just know that my other gun withstood getting wet and the day-to-day -day conditions of duck season way better. I mean, duck hunters are notorious for being neglectful on their equipment, which we're not the best at taking care of ours. We're pretty hard on our stuff, but we clean them, you know, what I would consider the average amount for a duck hunter. And it shouldn't have this kind of rust this early in its life. Again, though, this is a budget gun. Another con is a 300 as in three inch. So the A350, which shoots three and a halves. If you're a three and a half guy, this gun doesn't shoot them, it's not for you. It's built just like your normal Beretta. Uh, you got the button on bottom, the low button on bottom, throw one in there, cock it back, put one in the chamber, pretty standard. And with this gun, you can kind of just tell by pulling back the chamber. It just don't have a smooth, I mean, it's tough to pull back. It's been cleaned recently. I mean, it should be sliding back smooth. It's just, I mean, it's a $600 gun, man, and you can tell it when it's in your hands. But it didn't go through the extra step in the factory of smoothing all the edges, and you can just tell that when you feel it, it's rough to the touch. It's, it's squared off instead of rounded. It's got sharp metal edges. You know, everything's sharp on it. It's just not smooth when you feel it. Another kind. This problem alone about made me throw this gun in the garbage several times, and you'll just have to mess with the gun to see what I'm talking about. But breaking this gun down, whoever designed the way you take it down, just, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking. Pain until you get used to it to put this gun back together. You'll just have to do it to see what I'm talking about. If you do get the A300, just be patient. Getting mad is not gonna make it go together any faster. 
there's a couple of different problems with putting it back together just the whole design is kind of janky to me if you want to see how to put it back together go check out a video if you really want to see what's up on that i mean that's not a deal breaker for me i'm just letting you know it sucks reassembly sucks on the gun taking it down is not that bad but reassembly sucks i've just never been that frustrated messing with a gun it's a cheap design simple as that Keep in mind throughout this video that this is coming from the perspective of someone who hunts every single day in all the conditions. If you're just a weekend guy and you know you're not really putting your gun through the kind of stress that everyday hunting of the season will do, these things may not affect you. The gun will probably be fine. Any gun is probably going to be fine for most weekend guys. Just get one that feels good to you. My overall plan though when I got the A300 Outlander was to just get something that would hold me off until I could get the A400. I just didn't have the money to throw on it at the time. Still don't have the money to throw on it. And this thing's holding me down just fine. But do I recommend getting the Beretta A300? Uh, if you're like me and you want that Beretta feel and it's that's the price range you got, yeah, I recommend it. Would I recommend it as a long-term option? Definitely not. Save your money. Get the A400. I don't, I've not shot the A350. I don't know anything about it. I think it's similar to this gun just with three and a halves. But I'm not sure on that. It may be better quality build. I've not messed with it at all you'll have to check that gun out for yourself. If you want that like next class of gun above an 870, above a Mossberg pump, all those things, that's where this gun shines. I mean, it's that next class level. It's like $650, $700, and that's kind of where she falls. Do with that what you will. This is just all my opinion. I've duck hunted, you know, a long time. I've been around a lot of guns. The A300 will do the job, but it is gonna leave you wanting more. And hey, for sticking around, here's a few more clips of the Brett A300 in action. Kill him. Look out, get out. Tenderized. Shot him to pieces. I'm sorry. Tenderized him too. <laughs> Alright. But hey, thanks for watching today's video. I hope it helped you out in some way. If you want to check out our duck hunting videos, click right here. If you want to check out Glenn's review of the Stugger M3500, click right here. You can click subscribe right here if you're into that. Hey, I love each and every single one of you. And Lord willing, we'll catch you next time right here on Chasing Green. Later.